Bismillah. Okay, good evening, ladies on uh, Clubhouse, um, on Zoom and via Facebook Live. Really good to have you here this evening. This is our usual Saturday evening health bite size talk. Um, and, you know, we'd like to keep it chatty. We like to keep, you know, it catered to you. So, inshallah, do let us know, you know, any questions, any concerns you have about any of the topics that we've discussed so far. And this one's just like a continuation of one that we had last week. So this is the, oh, I haven't even put it into the room, but it's the Easy Health Gains room on Clubhouse. Um, you can follow me there and you'll be notified every time we have rooms open or any of the rooms that I join, you'll be able to see too. Um, and via Zoom and Facebook, um, I'm a health and wellness coach. Um, and I'm passionate about educate, educating mums, um, you know, on things that are really, really essential, um, you know, in, their, in terms of their health and, you know, creating confident eaters, um, you know, so my whole thing is centered around healthy eating for mums and, you know, creating recipes that are quick, easy and also delicious, you know, without having to worry about oh, this is going to take me ages and I'm going to be standing in the kitchen all night. So the, on Saturday evenings, we try to really break down health to you because, you know, there's so much confusion out there. So many, you know, diets and health information. It's like information overload. And we just want to have these sessions every week just to kind of give you an overview and to kind of break it down for you, make it simple for you to understand because, Health shouldn't be difficult, you know, and it isn't, it isn't, alhamdulillah. Um, so we hope that these sessions really kind of give you tips and, you know, practical things that you can inc include in your life to make things easy for you and, you know, be that example for your children, bi'idhnillah ta'ala, and have long-lasting health, bi'idhnillah ta'ala, so that, you know, we are able to have strength in our old age and, you know, worship Allah with strength in our old age. You know, what, what better thing can we have in, in our lives than, than good health? So that's me, and um, I'm just going to just ask my co-hosts to introduce themselves before I give you a short introduction. So Lisa or Rukhaya, one of you, if you'd like to introduce yourself, please. Lisa, just unmute, your, Lisa, unmute yourself on the... Uh, oh, there you go. Perfect. Therapy, as well as my answer, which is my talk today. I've been in London and we're looking at therapy. So, not really good for life, nutrition, and supplementation. Welcome, ladies. Pleasure to have you here with us this evening. Um, yeah, so if, if you do see us in uh, on Clubhouse or on Facebook, please do give us a follow so you are um, aware of what you know content we're putting out because we're putting out really beneficial content each week. You know, there's going to be something, inshallah, that will benefit you. Right, okay, so today um, we'll be looking at um, hot and cold foods. Like last week, we looked at temperament and, you know, the different types that were there and how each of those looked on, on you know, in, in a specific person. And they were just general kind of information. So if you've missed it, please go back um, and check it out. So we're going to be, con like I said, continuing looking at Yunani Tib, fascinating subject, and looking at the nature of food. food. You know, how is food viewed under Yunani Tib? Um, you might have heard hot and cold foods before. I don't know when when you lot actually, you know, came across this whole concept. For me, it was something that I'd heard 
um, after I actually gave birth. And that was the first time I'd kind of heard people mention hot foods. And it, it was slightly confusing for me. You know, my idea was, okay, when they said hot, it actually meant physically hot. Um, you know, and and it is kind of like that in Yunani Tib, but there is there is a difference too. Um, and we'll come to that, inshallah. Um, and yeah, so, um, so we, I had a few questions come, come to me last week and they were in regards to um, whether you could actually figure out your own temperament. And whilst I think, you know, with the information, you know, Rukaya actually gave was, was just immense, Allahumma barik, you know, you, you could figure out, I think in a kind of general way about your own temperament. Um, but I think if you work with a practitioner and Rukaya did answer this question, um, you're going to get a better insight because with Yunani tip, it doesn't just look at, okay, you know, a set of, a set of conditions and you just tick each of them off. That practitioner is going not only to figure out you as a person, they'll actually be looking at how you come into the room, how you walk, how you sit, how you speak. So all these kind of elements come into it. And this is how holistic health should be because we're all obviously individuals, right? And we're all going to have a very unique way um, in way in, in the way we hold ourselves in you know in, in what is suitable for us and what isn't right. Okay, so so if you want to work with a practitioner, you're going to get a better idea, inshallah bidna ta'ala, of um, what it is you need. Right, okay. So this idea of hot and cold foods. So as I mentioned, um, it was after postnatally when when people started mentioning this kind of thing to me. And, um, you know, my mom should always say to me, you know, when after I've given birth, you need to avoid cold foods, you need to keep warm and this kind of things. And, you know, I didn't really understand it then. I just kind of said, yes, yes, and just listened, you know, to her advice as you do. Moms know best. Um, so, yeah, and, and um, the, the kind of foods that, that were mentioned to me to have, like postnatally, which I would never even have thought of as being hot, were things like honey, and nuts and ghee and this kind of thing, right? And I was told to avoid like cold water, raw fruits um, and this kind of thing, right? Um, but like I said, even then, even after that, I didn't really know, you know, is it is it just postnatally that I have to worry about this? You know, I didn't know until I learned about Yunani Tib that this is something that, you know, is, is really important at almost all times and all aspects of our lives, right? Um, and before I just hand over to Rukaya to give us like a, a deep dive into this into this uh, topic, just going to give you like you know a mini introduction from the research that I've done um, in terms of Yunani Tib and hot and cold foods. So, according to their theories, um, you know you, Yunani uh, hot and cold foods can be based on the actual physical temperature of the food, right? But more importantly, it's based on the internal nature of food and whether that food um, has a, a heating or a cooling effect on the body. Um, as you know, the amazing thing is, is that is, is that element, right? Either the heating or the cooling that's going to affect your metabolism and your digestion. So, for example, um, cold foods, things like watermelon, apples, yogurt. And if you think about it, those are the kind of things that we tend to gravitate towards in the summer. And they are actually cooling foods. And what they will tend to do is clear toxins, provide a soothing effect on the body and this kind of thing. And the opposite is what uh, hot foods would do, right? So alhamdulillah, you know, th there is so much wisdom in, in when you think about it. And, you know, the effect and is going to have on our body and, you know, knowing this, inshallah ta'ala is is just just amazing and especially i think in terms of our children um you know knowing what we should give them when in terms of foods this is the this is the bit that i really wanted to go in in terms of you know any tips so that we can inshallah implement it in our own families i'm going to hand over to ruqayya now who's our expert in Yunani tip so over to you ruqayya Girls and welcome to the new system on Zoom. I saw some system audio and I think that came out. Shame on you. So, last week we spoke about temperaments 
And um, for those of you who have missed it, Sean might recommend that you go back and uh, uh, watch, listen to the video. Sean Mark, watch the video. Sorry, listen to the video and Sean Mark to have a look at. But we spoke about temperaments and how everybody is born in a specific and constitution. Now, even within the constitution, we spoke about hot and dry, which was a, you know, Spoke about sign individuals, moist individuals, whether or not bloods, bloods. We also spoke about phlegmatic, which is of a cold and moist nature, and also spoke about unimpeded, cold, dry, and uh, And we spoke about different differences and qualities. Associated with these temperaments, and you were to be balanced. Um, okay, uh, sorry to kind of cut you off, um, but your sound is cutting for me as well. It's not clear. A couple of people oh, saying too. Okay. Uh, let's see what I can do. It's still not clear, Ochdi. It's not clear at all. Keep speaking. Um, okay. Um, yes. yes. Is it clearer? Yeah, that's better. Yeah, that's one of the words. Um, yes. Yeah, so uh, we have to talk about the different qualities of each temperament and um, and, and diseases that may be associated with them. So today I'm going to go into the actual foods, the quality, the temperamental quality of the food. And we all know that diet plays a key role in preventing diseases and imbalances with our health. Um, and uh, this has been, uh, this is a world that it's a world principle that whatever you eat um, reflects on your health, level of your health and your longevity and longevity. Um, and generally, a diet poor in nutrition in nutritive quality in a nutritive, sorry, nutritive quality will diminish uh, the body's strength and ability to thrive. It will also um, weaken the body's immune responses and make us more vulnerable to infections, infection and disease. Um, the food that we actually eat not only contains, as we all know, components that help with metabolic processes, enzymes, vitamins, minerals. Um, what it it also uh, food that we also eat becomes part of us. Um, certain foods are broken down, assimilated in order to repair ourselves. So um, my this introduction of is just to emphasize the importance of. Um, the importance of uh, nutrition and food. I just wanted to emphasize that um, within United Medicine itself, a lot of the things that a practitioner would do is focus on nutrition. Surprisingly, people think that um, they might be given some sort of medication, some sort of, some sort of herb. Um, but the main thing, the, the main Oracle principle is we address the food. We address the food and we try to understand um, I try to make the person understand the foods that are for them, the foods that will benefit them. And it, with that, we try to investigate, we try to find out the, uh, the, the innate temperament of the individual and we work on from there. Um, most of the time, when a client comes, when a person comes um, with, a, with a condition or illness, um, they're already on balance at first. So they're already imbalanced, so they already are not. They may not be of their temperament. So they come. Let's say a person will come with a, a distemperament. So they might be cold and and, and flat, I'm sorry, cold and moist for phlegmatic. But that was not their original temperament. Um, and they really to thereby by asking the questions and through their diet, their lifestyle, we will find out what they did that um, deviated from. And then that's when we try to um, take that person back to their original temple and then that's when they get better. Um, so choosing so choosing poor quality foods will, will result in poor quality, quality of organs. And as I said, the food that we eat becomes part of us because this is the food that breaks down and is assimilated and starts to repair cells and damage the tissues and these tissues make up organs. So if we're eating up like poor quality food like literally some foods are literally have no like nutritional value 
and we're just eating them. And and they, you know, some most of them obviously have, that we eat nowadays, like carbs based, so refined carbs. And we're just like breaking down sugar, sugar, sugar. And we okay, go well, this, would this also mean, sorry, um, highly processed foods? Is that what you mean? Highly processed foods, yeah. So like refined carbs, for example. This is something, this is a pandemic, isn't it, Barry? Like people um, nowadays diets based on just white bread, croissant, um, you know, uh, a loaf of bread, um, pasta. And, you know, we lack in bio and nutrients within our food you know by diversity within our food and this it causes um it causes us to long term causes us to not only um have uh, health issues even minor minor health issues but it also leads to um developing weak organs our organs start to come um and this will may not affect your children today it might not affect us right now if we eat this but in, in the future it will and this will affect our, our, our offspring as well. And then we start to have a generational disease and illness. So I just wanted to, just a brief introduction about food, the importance of food um, being medicine. It can be your medicine, depending how it is it. Um, uh, and within United Medicine, um, as we know, as I mentioned last time, last lesson, uh, or last Zoom, uh, that um, with the United Medicine, they focus on the six factors. And one of the six factors that we're going to talk about today is food and drink. Oh, so what foods, how foods can influence your temper. Um, so how we eat, how we should be eating and, and, and what we eat depends on our constitution. There are different choices of healthy food within this earth. And um, as we know from the Quran, I will say, you know, eat from the food that we provide from the food. Um, eat and drink and don't be wasteful. Allah doesn't like those who are wasteful. Um, and these are certain things that are embedded within our, our, our religion. Um, and these are, if we follow these um, guide, guidelines and advice, then we will find that, that these are in line with health today. Um, and um, within the, the, the the various, uh, you know, provisions provision from Central Mago. There's so much different healthy foods available, and some of them are good for you. There could be certain vegetables, certain uh, grain that is good for me and my constitution, and there are some that are different and, and will be beneficial for you, and depending on your constitution. So, in your medicine, we look at this. So, um, uh, they, uh, so we spoke about Central Mago, uh, and in order to eat for our temperament, we must um, complement them. Um, and in the way we complement our temperament is we eat foods that are opposite to it. Or why? So if I'm a hot and moist person, so a sandwich, I need to eat foods that are cool. And I need to eat foods that are dry. Because as we mentioned last time, diseases associated with a hot and moist temperament, a sandwich, are, are uh, excess blood so excess heat and excess moisture and i mentioned that last week that uh, an example of diseases that are associated with a sandwich temperament then um, frequent migraines migraines high blood pressure fevers bloody diarrhea and all of these as you can see if you see the pattern are excess blood conditions and boils inflammation um, nosebleeds these so acute uh, illnesses or conditions are associated with um, excess blood. So what, what do we do? How does a sanguine person um, eat to their constitution? They eat poorly and dry food in order to cool the heat they have and uh, uh, regulate or adjust the excess moisture they have. And as we said last time, a person with a sanguine temperament, they have um, they have a lot of heaviness. So some of them have a lot of headaches, heavy head, um, puffy eyes, um, heavy eyes. Like they feel like something behind their eyes. But, you know that headache you get behind your eyes. You know that puffy, and you might get thick and puffy eyelids. And these are associated with moisture. So in order to keep the moisture at bay, in order to keep the heat at bay, we would 
sacrifice eating food and um, drying food. So, um, um, the individual of each temperament will be drawn to the food that resembles their temperament. So, generally, a person who is hot and moist of a sanguine temperament, I'm going to use this temperament as this example. I'm not going to use this temperament as an example, but inshallah, uh, I'm going to dwell into each temperament. Um, but a person of a sanguine temperament, so this is a hot and moist, a person who has a lot of excess blood here, yeah? they are going to crave the large producing foods. So if you're from a hot and moist temperament, you're sanguine, you're going to crave foods like lamb. You know, this is a food with a lot of heat, food with a lot of moisture. You're going to um, crave um, sweet sugar, yeah, because sugar uh, is a moisture producing food or uh, condiment, yeah. Um, and you're drawn, a person who is of a certain temperament, so somebody will be drawn to eating these moist producing or heat producing foods. But to counteract that and to make sure that the person does become imbalanced, so that the person does have an excess blood or an excess hot and moisture, then they will to eat oily and dry food. What happens if an individual who uh, is of a sanguine temperament and continues eating the food that resembles their temperament, so heat producing and a moisture producing food? Then, as I said earlier, it will cause an excess imbalance in the temperament, um, and this will produce, um, result in illnesses um, and uh, conditions and uh, acute, uh, acute, to acute, to uh, chronic um, health issues. And um, that's too much of a dominant uh, temperament. Too much eating, too much of your uh, foods that resemble your dominant temperament will have a negative effects in your health. Okay. So now I'm going to delve into diet. No, I, um, I think someone speak, uh, has a speak themselves. Okay, now, Okay, so I'm going to delve into the food that um, a sandwich, so a hot and moist individual, should be eating. Okay, um, so. Firstly, there are times suited for each temperament, advised. So there are times that you should eat that will um, support your constitution, unless there are times or there are even portions that would say um, that um, you should um, consider when you're eating. So a person of a standard temperament, so a blood, a blood individual, so this is a hot and moist person. I'm sorry, I'm keep repeat, I keep repeating the three names, sanguine, blood, hot and moist, but I just don't want to confuse you guys to get used to this terminology. Um, so um, be patient, bear with me, inshallah. So a sanguine temperament, um, this person would be advised to have two medium to large meals a day. And eating more than two meals a day may cause excess heat and may or may cause an excess of moisture. Make them, it may give them symptoms of heaviness. So we advise that they eat um, two medium, if they can, to large or large meals a day and try not having to read full um, heavy meals or large meals a day. Um, as I said earlier, a sanguine individual, a hot moist individual, should eat fully and dry foods. Yeah? And what are the examples of cooling and dry foods? Okay. Um, a cooling, so an example of cooling dry food is for meat. So I'm going to go into meat. And these are just random. Um, different categories of food, and um, if I was to mention all of them, we will be able to midnight. So I'm going to mention my brief um, common foods that are hot, sorry, that are fully and dry for the language. So mussels, yeah, this type of this is like seafood, mussels, um, oysters, yeah, these have a fully and dry effects to the body. Turkey. And foods that are, ten so meats, this is meat, so I'm talking about starting from meat. Yeah, and meat that so foods, protein, animal foods, the lighter they are in color in general is uh, the cooler they are. So, salmon is their seafood, but it has a pink, uh, it has a pink color, right? So, that's not good. Salmon is actually heating, yeah. So, that wouldn't be great 
for a large type of individuals or family. That doesn't mean you can't use it, but this is this is a this is a general advice um, pertaining to how you should be eating most of the time. Yeah, this does not mean that you don't have to eat. You can't eat other foods. No, but this is what we're saying. You should, you should try and incorporate a majority of the time. So mussels, really, like oysters, turkey. I think mean, turkey is a um, it's it's a it's like a white yeah cod you know cod seafood is white um, or other white fishes uh, and bear in mind chicken is cooler it's a cooler option um, in terms of temperament than lamb or or, or, or oh, sorry sheep um, so and so forth and beef so yeah chicken would be um, cooler um, than lamb so that would be a good option. So mussel, oyster, turkey, but I just wrote brief uh, a few minutes, yeah? Uh, vegetables. So aubergine. Aubergine will be a good option for a sanguine. Brussels sprouts, cabbage, potato, sauerkraut, yeah? Uh, yeah, so that's uh, vegetables. What else do I have there? So I've got uh, mushrooms, green beans, peas, potatoes. So these are the type of vegetables that are cooling and dry for the sun and the uh, fruit, fruit. Fruits, yeah? Can you guys hear me on Clubhouse? Yes, Rukhaya, we can hear you. Carry on. Okay, brilliant, yeah. Um, fruits, so sour fruits. So sour fruits are beneficial for um, a blood type of individual because it's dry. And the sour fruits are high. Sour fruits, sorry. If sour fruits in general, but we're talking about fruits here. Fruit, sour fruits are generally um, black, black, black astringents. And also they dry well. So um, they will keep the moisture, the excess moisture at bay. So if a person is feeling um, heavy, you know, they're feeling really heavy um, and um, and then say they're a person who keep complaining, they have the qualities or the signs of a, um, a hot and moist temper. And you suddenly start to feel very heavy, heavy, heavy like headache, um, get up in the morning, just, you just feel too hot and heavy. Yeah, um, heavy um, headache, your body just is, just feels like you can't carry it. Have, have a sour product or sour dish, pickles, um, sour crab sour fruits um, and, and we all see a difference yeah um, let me know if any of you guys um, try this let me know sure. so yeah sour fruits green apples yeah so green apples are sour garlic apples, or the other type of apples. so green apples so cherries sour cherries grapefruit lemon lime um, these are really especially in the morning so I know a lot of people of, uh, that have imbalances with um, sanguine imbalance. So excess blood temperament or excess phlegmatic temperament. And they suffer from heaviness. Um, and uh, I advise them to walk, to take a uh, uh, to take uh, have some warm water and lemon water, especially for the individual these of a hot and moist temperament. Sandwich. Why? Because lemon has a cool effect, yeah, and lemon has a drying effect, and that's perfect for sandwich, yeah. But for the person of a phlegmatic uh, temperament, so a cold and moist person, I would advise them to do the same because they both have moisture in common. They both they both may suffer from excess moisture, and they both may have the symptoms of heaviness, yeah. So for the sanguine, the blood temperament we're talking about right now, I would say lemon and water, yeah. For the Phlegmatic individual who's, have, who's suffering from similar symptoms, heaviness, then I would say in the morning, have lemon and water with honey. So why am I saying honey? Because honey is actually warm, right? So it's perfect to balance the cold of this person suffering from excess moisture, yeah? Because it's going to not only heat them, but honey's heating, and um, we also uh, dry them with mental stuff, yeah? Whereas the person of the sandy temperament we were just talking about, I would come to have honey because it's warming. Let's say have some warm water, yeah, and some lemon. 
Warm water also and warm water to water and then warm water is um, warm water is going to be so uh, as a general that principle in most water bottles. but um, and that's the difference so we need to cater to each temple so lemon lime brilliant grapefruit amazing as well um, pineapple orange plum so you can see the pattern here when it comes to the blood temple and they need to have citrusy sour uh, fruits they need to enjoy them more than other fruits basically um, plum um, raspberries and um, strawberries and uh, sultana as well um uh, yeah so examples of a meal so there was uh, i read some i saw uh, uh since i talking about different meals you know different temples and she just gave ideas so she said like a typical meal for like some blood type temple would be turkey or cod say with some couscous um, or any other grain like millet, uh, maybe alternative bread made from coconut flour, uh, apples, uh, trolley. So she just gave just a brief example of the uh, foods that you can uh, have. There are other um, foods, so I'm going to go to grains, and um, that's good for sangu, which is why beans and pulses, they have a cooling effect for the sangu. Uh, uh, corn flour um, and obviously we advise non genetically modified corn so if you find organic corn uh, corn flour then that's what I would advise from a nutritional um, perspective um, couscous uh, if you are those one food it's great <laughs> um, linseeds maize and poppy seeds sesame seeds so these are uh, grains and seeds that are advised when it comes to dairy products, um, it, it, you can have egg whites, it's quite cool and dry. Um, sour milk, yeah, sour milk is cool and dry. Um, and butter is cool and dry. Um, and remember, yogurt is cool and dry, but milk is cool and moisty. Yeah, and that would be that moisture make not and benefit the person who is of blood and Actually, cause an opposite effect, yeah. Like, not when it should be. Okay, um, oils. So, uh, sesame oil. Oh, sesame oil. Okay, I'm gonna skip that. I have to look into that. Uh, hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna skip that. Um, uh, yeah, so condiments and spread. So, balsamic vinegar. So, vinegars are generally quite cooling and dry. General, so general principle that um, vinegars are cooling and dry. So, any vinegar. Um, Pickles, as I said, tomatoes, tomato sauce, um, Worcester sauce, tamarind, um, all of these are generally cooling and dry condiments uh, that are excellent and great for a blood type. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I'm going on to uh, cleric. So, cleric temperament is a hot and dry um, uh, institution. Uh, and the following foods will be beneficial for them. So, uh, for meats, chicken is generally uh, good for them. Lobster is so. This is sorry, guys. Uh, wrong. I'm reading really the wrong side. Uh, a hot and dry individual. Let's go back. A hot and dry individual will benefit from cooling and moistening food. So, what we're trying to achieve is we're trying to cool down the heat, and we're trying to uh, Increase them in moisture. And as I mentioned in the last lesson, a hot and dry individual is generally of a thin um, stature. They're quite thin. They're, uh, they're thin. Um, they have a yellow undertone. And, and they have, if they're in bad medicine, they suffer from health issues like, like a liver inflammation, jaundice, fever as well, as, as just like the standard, they're both heat and supplements. So fevers, ulcers. Um, loose bowel movements and this is all if they're in excess yeah and so what we need to do is we need to cool down this individual and we need to add moisture yeah um, and so we're going to look for cooling and moistening foods okay so an example of cooling and moistening food for a cotton dandy would be duck um, i don't think 
dust is something that's quite common within our um, as well, the added rabbit with duck. Um, and there's rabbits in there as well. And yes, they leave. Some people eat rabbits. Yes, um, <laughs> it does occur. So this is something that um, that's including our books that rabbit would be a um, good type of food for them to eat. Um, also, uh, beef is poorly and moistened. Yeah. However, um, it's quite heavy on the liver. So in general, the principle is beef. Uh, the meat of beef is recommended uh, in the United States that much. Obviously, we do. There is a big difference between the meat and the blood, a piece in the blood of an individual. Um, but in the United States, it's not advised to over consume anything beef. Um, and uh, even within Sunnah as well, uh, eating too much porridge, uh, eating too much beef. Yes, correct. I was going to say that too from the Sunnah, you know, the, 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 the Hadith, كما قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم, you know, it's said to, to drink the milk um, and avoid the meat. So in, in small amounts, I guess, is the is the key, right? Absolutely. Yeah. And for those who suffer from blood deficiencies, uh, uh, like other than uh, blood deficiencies, then you might have no you say to them, okay, just have some, just get yeah, indulge in some beef, inshallah, or uh, other uh, blood producing uh, meats like lamb, and inshallah, until your blood gets, uh, you know, your blood gets up, increased. This is something that we like to them. Beef is really heavy for the liver, it can cause, uh, it can cause uh, the, the liver to uh, focus on digesting so much that. Uh, People's little toxins, people's heaviness in the body, and other heavy conditions. So, beef isn't something that we can on a regular basis. Okay, so vegetables for the pots and dry individuals. The following is uh, advice for a pot and dry So, beef, so bean curd, so bean curd, beef, uh, uh, butternut, broccoli, uh, carrots, cucumber. Uh, squash, uh, Indian blood, and God. I, I, I think that's, I think I know what Indian blood is, but I, uh, I don't know in English. So I think I'm a matter of Urdu, and it sounds weird, but we learned that Urdu. Say it. <laughs> Say what is it in Urdu? Um, uh, is it that Kerala? I think so. Or is that yeah. bitter good? Yeah. Anybody yes. who knows, please feel free to open your bikes and tell us. Yeah, okay. Um, Is it that green, like, alligator? Yes, yes, thing? spiky. Yeah, Kerala. That bitter, is bitter in yes. it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, I think there's different types. I think there's a bitter one, and there's one not so bitter. And the bitter one would be good for a sandwich, and the not bitter one would be good for a curry. So, um, yeah, because remember, um, Bits of foods, guys. Remember this principle. Bits of foods are dry. So if you're from a cold and moist temple or a hot and moist temple, then you should, inshallah, try and have bits of foods. And there's a pandemic within us these days where we don't consume enough bits of foods. We used to um, foods that we uh, that our taste buds excite and over excite our taste buds. Unfortunately, um, uh, that. You know, it, this causes um, like issue with digestion. It causes an issue with the liver because the liver needs to be um, triggered and elicited. Um, and the main thing that elicits and triggers um, the liver to do its job properly is bitter foods. You know, um, so yeah, that's just a side line advice um, for us to give and just to put out there. Okra is a colder moist food. It produces moisture. You know, okra has this like um, um, uh, component in it. Um, so that's good to increase the moisture for the hot and dry person. Um, lettuce, lettuce is cool and moist as well. Yeah, uh, pumpkin, radish, sprouts, uh, tofu, turnips, courgettes. So these are vegetables that are advised for hot and dry fruits. So Apricots would be good for, for a moist person. They will cool and 
use their moisture dump. And cranberries, uh, and cranberries, yeah, okay, cranberries, figs, kiwi fruit, and melon, mulberries, and pears, prickly pears, watermelon, bananas, avocado. And as you can see, these fruits, the main, these fruits that I've named, like, they are calling out moisture. Fruits. Look at watermelon. They've got, it's got a lot of moisture. It's in the name, it's in the name, water. Yeah, so this is excellent for dry um, institution um, and it's cooling for well, Ottoman Hazakon. We know that this is a favorite um, fruit to have in Ramadan, especially in, in the summer. Um, cools and increases moisture, increases you to, increases you to protection, you know, Ramadan, I have to get to entire time, having to go to the toilet. I keep making a call um, if I had too much of it. Um, banana, banana is a moisture producing food. And um, those who have a cold, for example, suffering from a cold and uh, cough, um, uh, you shouldn't have you shouldn't have banana. Stay away from banana. This is something that I mean, one of the main things we advise. Don't have banana if you've got a cold. It will increase you. Yeah. Um, and avocados uh, as well. Avocados um, has a lot of fat, but it's mucus producing, so it increases your moisture. This is why it's good for a hot dry person, because they're dry and it increases the moisture. Uh, so yeah, uh, I'm gonna move to nuts. So uh, the most recommended nuts for a hot and dry person is macadamia nuts. It's cooling uh, and it's moistening. Yeah, grains and seeds. So cucumber seeds are great for a hot and dry person. Melon seeds, pumpkin seeds. Uh, so rice, rice cakes are in here. Yeah, rice cakes, rice. Uh, semolina, watermelon seeds. Now I'm going to move on to dairy products. Um, so cooling and moistening. Um, I mentioned earlier uh, something, a dairy product that's cooling and moistening. Then we talk about it. Remember what it was? A cooling, a cooling and moistening dairy product. Dairy product. Yeah. Did you say yogurt? Um, no. I guess. <laughs> Milk. Milk, yeah. I was testing you. I was testing you, Faria. Um, <laughs> cow's milk, yeah. And um, cow's milk in general, just milk in general, um, are, are cooling and moistening, yeah. So if a person is, if you figure out like oh, a person who's of a cold and moist temperament, having cow's milk or having milk um, too much will imbalance you, will increase you in the picture, and that's not what you want to do. So for a person who's of a hot and dry temperament, cow's milk. Um, we'll cool them down, cool their heat, and increase their moisture. Goat's milk. Can I just okay. ask, okay, yeah. um, because obviously, you know, milk is something that is such a big part, say, like even for like children's diet, and even in our diet as, as a general thing, would, would we be able to take something like cow's milk and, you know, make it suitable for a different temperament, either like heating it up or adding something? Is that possible to do? Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, That's something that. Um, I wanted to mention as well later on. Um, there are ways that you can balance the cold food in order to suit your temperament. So, um, so you mix and match foods. That's the main thing. Um, that's the main thing with cooking on medicine. You're mixing and matching. So this is I'm giving you that general guide, but inshallah, um, ho hopefully in the future I can start to tell you how to mix and match your foods. Inshallah, me and father can come up with um, a few recipes and that will incorporate. And temperamental, uh, temperamental guidelines how to make the food suit you. For example, let's talk about cow's milk. Yeah, let's say you're a person who has excess, who has excess moisture and uh, and you don't you know, want to have milk for so you don't want to imbalance your temperament. You're going to find what you do is you will not only warm it up, so let's say it's too cold, it's a cold food, so you don't, and you're from a cold temperament, you do something warm. So you're going to warm the food, of course. That's the first thing you do, warm it up. And then you're going to add certain things to warm up the actual cow's milk. So you want to change its energetics, change its temperament to suit you. So for, for a person who wants to make this a hotter temperament, you will make cow, your cow's milk, your cup of milk, and warm up. What you're going to do is you're going to add uh, some spices. So you're going to add... Uh, so for me, I'm going to talk about this is what I do suit my temperament, yeah? I can't handle a lot. 
yeah it's too cold it just gives me too, it just gives me shivers I, just, I don't i can't have milk but um and i'm generally i i don't have cow's milk in general uh, alternative milks but if i was to have cow's milk and I, I do sometimes what i do i add turmeric so i have like some sort of gold turmeric latte which is my favorite thing to have for those who know me and on my social media i i all post it so um turmeric black pepper ginger and this is something this is from um, india southeast asia something that they do i think they call it um gold milk and stuff like this um, and those components because they're from a hot and dry temperament they heat up the milk energetically so within the milk itself it starts to you know shift the energetics and the effects of the milk in the world shifts because you're adding hot and dry spices to it and this goes to food as well you cook in a way that turns that food to temperament to kind of manipulate your cooking to suit your body yeah so um just like you manipulate uh, a dishes so let's say you're cooking a curry yeah and uh, it's too hot for your child so one of your one of your children can have a key and the other can't and remember this is because of their temperament this is because of your child's temperament the children are going to have temperament very temperate and so one of your children one one child of yours may be maybe able to handle it and one not they want to change it up so for example i say i make a curry today and it's quite spicy yeah i'm going i would add yogurt so my child can't hold it to pull it down and this is something that i'm not sure like in southeast asia in Pakistan, this is something that they do naturally mashallah and, and they a lot of them have yogurt on the side you know, they have yogurt so they have, this is something this is there's hikmah in this and some people just do it. i know like, a lot of them, south asian friends they do this naturally it's just something that, that they're taught to do um, um and they don't understand why but there is a you know there is a cultural um, understanding to why they do this you know and so you would add yogurt on the side to pull the food and then you're taught that child can handle it and the other child won't be able to and so the other child can have the spicy food. Yeah. Okay. Um how is the time for you? Yeah, okay. I mean how much more have you got left? Is it just um, a yeah um, I'm I'm not I don't think I'm gonna be able to finish up with something next. Um is there any way we can continue next? Um yeah, inshallah, inshallah, bidni la ta'ala, ladies, I, you know, that was, alhamdulillah, super, super beneficial. I mean, just a question that I had, and just, just in terms of what you mentioned in regards to the milk. So even if you don't, you know, say you kept the milk, like, for straight from the fridge, right, but and you added all these things into it, would that still be okay? Or would you, would you have to literally warm it up physically to get it, like, warm milk or? Yeah, so in order to warm the milk, for, to make to make the um, milk suitable for a warm, hot temperate um, person who is trying to um, become warm, so a phlegmatic individual, for example, you need to warm it up. Yes, um, if you have you, a lot of spices, they need to be heated up in order to get their um, their yeah. full energetic yeah. effects. And um, some of them are not activated until they're heated. Um, so yes, you would need to if you're taken out of the fridge and using no spices may not be a benefit and may not you may not get objective, you may not be able to do what you need to do, which is warm up and change the temperament of the food. So yes, with the milk you need to warm it up and then add the spices in order to uh, to get it to the temperament to get it to yeah. Wow, okay, that was uh, really amazing. Allah Mubarak. Um ladies, if there's any questions, um you can raise your hands, ask them, um however you want to do it inshallah to ask Rukhaya. um because obviously yes you know we we have this issue like in terms of eating with our family um you know we have those who like spice and those who don't and yeah for sure you know that's that's a great way of um adding uh you know that that benefit of them having the meal because obviously we ain't you know we haven't got time to make two different meals here but yeah just a simple thing like just adding yogurt um, you know, alhamdulillah, it cools it down. And uh, yeah, that is definitely something that we do. Um, and like me personally, I can't really handle spice. So like, if one of my teens have cooked that day and they that they actually like spice, you know, it becomes a mushkila for me. So I have to have yogurt with it or something to cool it down. So 
yeah, alhamdulillah, you know, um, really beneficial, Allahumma barik. Um, if there's anything that you ladies want to ask in terms of your children or questions that you have, or we have a couple of questions. Uh, uh, okay. Um, um, Faria? Yes. Sorry, just before um, some last question, I just would like to bring an anecdotal anecdote to um, Oh, go ahead. I'll mention it. Because I was on my list and I completely forgot. Um, I was approached by a sister um, and uh, a client, she, and she said, you know what, sister, I've started to suddenly break out. You know, uh, my skin, she, she had that thing. She was my skin, she, uh, I can have been at bay for a long time. And suddenly, um, it started to, like, become aggressive. Uh, it increased and it's just, it's inflamed. It's just too much. I don't know what I did. I don't know what's changed. And the first thing I said to her was, "Have you been eating any? Uh, have you been eating any uh, hot, like hot foods?" And she was like, "What's that?" I said, "Or oh, any ginger, turmeric, any uh, black pepper, anything like this." And she said, "Yes, I've been doing a uh, cayenne pepper ginger juice shots." How did you know? <laughs> and I said, "There you go." And she's of a temperament. She's of a hot and dry temperament. This is already hot and dry. And these things dried her out. Do you understand? So there are things that are... Uh, she, this wasn't for her. So obviously she, she was trying to be healthy. She was trying to have get the full benefits of ginger and, and black pepper, cayenne pepper, which is brilliant. But she she dried herself out. She, she did it in a way where uh, she did ginger juice with uh, uh, the cayenne pepper. Too heating. And it dried her up and it actually caused um, inflammation and increased that. So, yeah, so there, there are things that are healthy that are good for you, but just the way that you approach it and the way you take it can then have a negative effect. So, yeah, just going that way. Wow, wow, there you go, isn't it? I mean, it's something that um, I think I came across, I think it was a couple of weeks ago, it was something that I just read, it was a meme or something, you know, it says we're, sometimes being healthy can make you sick and it's just like that it's just that lack of understanding you know when we when we just hear of something that's like trending or you know everybody's doing this right now or let's have lemon or let's drink you know eight glasses of water a day you know sometimes we just go ahead and do it and you know we don't realize that hold on a second is this actually going to be suitable for my body so yeah that's a really good point to make there um, so yeah, ladies uh, who are on Clubhouse, um, Jazakallah for being here with us this evening. Do give um, us moderators at the top a follow. Um, and if you have any questions or you know things that you want to come back with to us later on, you're more than welcome to do so. You can reach out to us on social media. Um, and as Rukaya has mentioned, she does have a clinic in North London. Lisa also has her own shop where she sells, you know, organic beauty products. You're more than welcome to reach out to any of us. Um, and we're always happy to answer your queries and concerns. Um, the recording of this will be available, inshallah, on my YouTube channel. And Rokaya, um, inshallah, she might be able to get that to you if you're on any of her groups or any of her social media too, inshallah. My uh, YouTube channel is organic all round. Um, and yeah, I hope to see you all next week where we can round this topic up and do the last two temperaments that we didn't get to mention um, this evening. Uh, and inshallah, we'll see you all then. Jazakallah khair for being with us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wow.